If you are able, we stand to welcome the Sabbath bride. Please be seated. The first reading Heidi Mathet will lead, it's called Why We Age. Heidi, please unmute. Why, Why we, we age. age. Until, Until Abraham, Abraham, there were, there no, were no signs, signs of, of old age. age. What could, what be, could better be better than, than eternal, eternal youthful, youthful experience. Experience. experience? For starters, it be, might be hard to tell people apart. And the Gemara, Gemara continues, whoever wished to speak to Avraham would often speak to Yitzchak. And one who wished to speak to Yitzchak would often speak to Avraham. With Yitzchak looking at like his father and with no discernible signs of aging, it was next to impossible to tell father and son apart. Thereupon, Abraham prayed for mercy and old age came into existence. When my son and I enter a city, no one is capable of distinguishing between us. In those days, a man would live to be 100 or 200 years old without acquiring the distinguishing features of old age. It is imperative, master of the universe, that you should distinguish between father and son, between old and young, so that the young will respect the old. The Holy One, blessed be he, replied, be assured I will begin to distinguish between young and old with you. The Midrash describes Abraham's reaction when God put his suggestion into practice that very night. Abraham went to sleep, and when he arose in the morning, he found that the hair of his head and beard had turned white. Master of the universe, he exclaimed, you have made me a public spectacle. The Holy One, blessed he, replied, be he, replied, your gray hair is a crown of glory. And it says elsewhere, and the beauty of the elderly is their gray hair. That's why it says in, the, in our Parsha, and Abraham was old. So anytime anyone feels like, why is this happening? Now you know, you can blame Abraham. Okay? Okay. So we continue with the Hatsi Kaddish. Thank you, Heidi, for reading. if you're able to stand. Marahu et Adonai Please be seated. So before we read Ma'ariv Aravim, the prayer that talks about the change of seasons, I want to talk about something other than the weather, although I always find that very interesting. And the more we um, are mindful, the more we remember. But I want to also talk tonight briefly with you. And if um, 
Rick, if you could put us on gallery view so that we can see one another. But the question I have is, what is changing? So if just a few of you might be so bold as to uh, share with us something that you see is changing. And I'll let you unmute yourself, please. Um, I think that um, this situation that we're in with COVID is going to be changing with the new inoculations. I'm very excited about it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? What's changing? Susan. Well, the climate is changing. The climate is changing both in the short term in terms of the seasons, but also the climate is changing because of um, global climate change and ice caps are melting and sea level is rising and are there more wildfires and getting hotter? Thank you. That is definitely what is changing. What's something else that's changing? One more. Well, I can tell you something that's changing. The playing field has been leveled around the world. There, the distinction between one person and another is slowly becoming erased and COVID is responsible for erasing it. There is not one single person on the face of the earth who is unaffected by this. And because of that, it levels the playing field and makes us a lot more equal with one another, therefore makes us a lot more willing to reach out and help one another. No one person is any better than anybody else. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So now with those thoughts in mind, as well as the ones that you have in your own, Sherry, you've got one. I feel it. No, actually I was seeing Nick. Nick has had his hand. Oh, up. okay. I can't see anybody at all, at all, really. So thank you for letting me know. Nick, what's changing? Well, um, there's a new presidential administration coming in in January. Yay. <laughs> that is changing. Absolutely. Thank you. And with that concept of changing, let's enter into the prayer of change. Ma'ariv Aravin. Together, Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Bidvaro Ma'ariv Aravin, Bechochma Poteach Sha'arim, Uvitfuna Meshane Itim, Umachalif Et Hazmanim, Um Sader Et HaKochavim, Bamishmaroteam Varakia Kirtsono. Bore Yom Valila, Golel or Mipene Hoshech, Bahoshech Mipene or Uma Avir Yom, Umevi Lila, Umavdil Ben Yom Uven Lila, Adonai Seva Ochimo. El Haiva Kayam Tamidim Lohalenu Le Ulamva Ed, Baruch Hatadonai, Hama Ariv, Aravin. Ahavatulam, I realize. Um, that we might want to add English to some of these prayers, um, just to be reminded that this prayer talks about God loving us and giving us the gift of, of text, uh, Torah, so that we continue to struggle uh, with it and keeping our minds sharp and developing our heart. <laughs> Bet Yisrael, Amachavta, Amchavta, Torah u'mitzvot, Chukim u'mishpatim, Otanu limadta, Otanu limadta. Al kein Adonai Eloheinu v'shoch beinu u'fkumenu nasiach v'chukecha v'nismach b'divrei Toratecha u'v'mitzvotecha le'alam v'ed ki hem chayenu v'orech yameinu u'vahem nagayom avalaylam Nagayom avalaylam, 
ואהבתך אל תסיר. ממנו לעולמים, ברוך אתה אדוני, אוהב עמו ישראל, אוהב עמו ישראל. שמא ישראל, אדוני אלוהינו, אדוני אחד. שמא ישראל, אדוני אלוהינו, The translation of this prayer is that we should love God with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our strength. And these are things that we, um, our mitzvot, our religious commandments upon our heart. וכל לבבך ובכל נפשך ובכל מיודך והיו הדברים האלה אשר אנוכי מצבך היום על לבביך ושיננתם לבניך ודיברת בהם ושבתך בביתך ולפך בדרך ובשוכבך ובקומך וקשרתם לאות על ידיך והיו לתותפות בין עיניך, וכתבתם המזוזו ביתך ובשעריך. למען תזכרו ועשיתם את כל מצוותיי, ואיתם קדושים לאלוהיכם. אני היא אדוני אלוהיכם, אשר הוצאתי אתכם מארץ מצרים, להיות לכם לאלוהים. אני אדוני אלוהיכם, אדוני אלוהיכם אמת. Our second reading, oh what a beautiful image, thank you Rick. Our second reading will be read to us aloud by Moria. Moria, can you unmute please? And you, uh, Rick, you may need to lift it up a little bit so that she can see the words. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Good evening, all. Honor and aging. You shall rise before the aged and show deference to the old. You shall fear your God. I am the Adonai, Leviticus 19.32. Gray hair is a crown of glory. It is attained by the way of righteousness. Proverbs 16.31. He said to him, I do not remember what he did in his youth, but the deeds of his old age, I remember to Anit. Thank you. Thank you. Sherry Meyer, would you please read Learning from the Wise? Rabbi Yosa ben Judah, a man of Kfar Hababli, said, 
He who learns from the young, to what is he compared? To one who eats unripe grapes and drinks wine from his vat. And he who learns from the old, to what is he compared? To one who eats ripe grapes and drinks matured wine. Rabbi said, don't look at the container, but at that which is in it. I vote 420. Thank you. This Shamruvan Israel at Hashabat. La Sota Tashabat, the Dorotam. Very to love. Vain the Nasahel Oti. Oti. I, I mentioned something at our social action meeting last night. So those of you who are there, thank you for your patience and hearing it again. But on the last night of Hanukkah, I had the good fortune of lighting candles at Eschaton. And uh, Carrie Cohn was there. And I asked, even though I, I asked a number of them what Hanukkah meant to them. And Carrie said, uh, and this is such a great teaching that I, I so appreciate it. She said she remembered as being a child in Germany and a family that was not wealthy. And for Hanukkah, their, her papa, her dad, would, would, would somehow acquire an orange that came all the way from Palestine. It was a Yaffa orange. And, be, and she remembers, she said, what that crinkly gold paper looked like that held the orange and that she could almost still feel what that crinkly paper felt like and then they would unwrap the orange and you know peel it and everyone would get a section of the yaffa orange that had come all the way from palestine so when i think about that um it makes me want to be more mindful of the moments that I have, because I think that that's the way that I'm hoping that I will remember more things. So I share that with you from Carrie. Okay, let's go into Tefillah. Adonai sifatah <laughs> Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Belohe Avotenu Vimoteinu Elohe Avraham Elohe Yitzchak Belohe Yaakov Elohe Sarah Elohe Rivka Elohe Rachel Belohe Leah Ha El Hagado Hagibor Vahanora El El Yahon, Gomel Chasadim Tovim, the Kone Hakol, the Zoche Chasia Vot Vimahot, who may be Gula live Nevenehem, the Manchimo Biava, Melechose Umoshia Umagen, Baruch Ata Adonai, Magen Avraham, the Esrat Saram. Atagi burle la maranai, mechaye meti mata rav lo shia, mashiv haruach umorid hagashem. Mechakel chayim bechesed, mechaye meti berachamim rabim. So mech no flim vrofe holim, 
Umatira surim, umekayem emunato, li shene afar. Michamacha bagivurot, umidamelach, melech memit umechayet, umat miach yeshua, benemanatalach ayometim, baruch atadonai. If you are standing, please be seated. Roberta, would you please uh, read insights from the famous? And if Dave wants to share them with there is, you. There is a fountain of youth. It is your mind, your talents, the creativity you bring to your life and the lives of the people you love. When you learn to tap the source, you will truly have defeated age, Sophia Loren. The longer I live, the more beautiful life becomes, Frank Lloyd Wright. Aging is not lost youth, but a new stage of opportunity and strength, Betty Friedan. Don't waste so much time worrying about your skin or your weight. Develop what you do, what you put your hands on, on in the world, Meryl Streep. Thank you. Thank you both very much. This prayer talks about accepting our prayers, accepting that, God, that the Holy One should uh, accept the prayers uh, the best that we can offer them. And like water pouring on our hands, that um, the purity of that. Ritzay Adonai Eloheinu Ba'amecha Yisrael Utefilatam Fiyahavah Tikabel Utahil Ratzon Tamir Avodat Yisrael Yisrael Amecha Baruch Spiritual saging. A person must renew their habits and customs in every moment. Spiritual aging causes one to become stagnant and evaporates vitality and pleasure. It causes withering and physical aging, even in one's youth. So the Baal Shem Tov commented, do not forsake me in old age. Let not old age and stagnation rule my habits and customs. Degel Machane Ephraim on Ekev translated by Rabbi Dale Friedman. At this point, we really want to uh, focus on this concept of age is beautiful. And we are featuring our guest speaker, Darlene Cullivan, Community Engagement Manager at Eschaton. And we will ask Jeannie Appel uh, to introduce our speaker. Jeannie. Thank you. Um, before I get started, I've had a few email interactions with Darlene and I've read her bio and just from that little snippet of her life, one second of it, um, the Sophia Loren quote um, seems to apply to her that she has discovered the fountain of youth that her mind talents and creativity um, is what she brings to people and that's what keeps you young. 
So um, we're very fortunate to have Darlene Cullivan with us today. If you read her bio, you could see she's a compassionate spiritual leader and a community builder. She's a former teacher and is now part of Eschaton's Philanthropy and Community Outreach Department. And she is their community engagement manager and she chairs the spiritual care program at Eschaton. And she directs the Eschaton's chaplaincy program. She also is the vice president of the community development for Roseville Chamber of Commerce and is the president elect for 2021. So please welcome Darlene Cullivan and thank you for being here. Thank you. Oh, that's so, my pleasure. Thank you so much. That's so gracious. I, I, I'm truly touched by those very kind words. Thank you so much. It's a joy to be with you and to talk about Age is Beautiful. It's one of my favorite subjects, as you can imagine, and I so enjoyed the service thus far. Thank you for including me. I, I'm so edified. And I think about inspiration and how all of us here can think about that what that which inspires us. Perhaps it's nature, the beauty of sunrise or the splendor of sunset. If you're like me, I love being outside with, uh, in any setting, we live pretty close to the American River bike trail and I love enjoying that. I love going to the mountains and uh, the fresh air to me is very inspirational. But even more than creation, um, I'm inspired by people gathering together to worship, to be um, equipped, and to spur each other on to serve others. To me, that is so beautiful. And I'm just so grateful to see that you live lives that, that indeed want to do that. Um, I think people giving of themselves, not because they have to, but because they want to is one of the most beautiful things that we can behold together. In fact, it was um, my children's first grade teacher, Mrs. Lynn Lively, who taught them in the very early age in first grade. So she said, when I ask you to do something, your correct response is, I'd be happy to. And so I loved that as a mother, as you can imagine, that not only was she teaching them to complete the task, but she was teaching them how to truly serve one must have the appropriate attitude of joy. And that's indeed, I think what all of us can um, agree upon is that serving when it's coupled with joy, not because we have to, but because we want to, there's something that's so satisfying, so deep in our souls. And in fact, I know that this congregation is a very serving congregation because you all are um, participating in our quarantine kindness campaign, which in February you'll be writing letters and perhaps uh, even creating some little gift bags for our residents in an effort to let them know that they are not alone during this time of social isolation, that they are still valued and part of the community. And so I really wanna thank you about that. We also are doing a blanket drive during this Christmas and uh, Gina also um, wanted that to be mentioned. Um, it's been amazing that today, in fact, uh, a company called Tax Audit, they brought a hundred blankets into our support center. And the day before we had another hundred blankets delivered by another community partner, as well as high school students. And it's just been amazing to see the, again, the community coming together with this interest in serving our elders. And so I thank you for that. I, I, I think it's really exciting to talk about Age is Beautiful because it goes against that which our society thinks of, right? We think of aging, we associate aging with decline and deterioration and sometimes even sickness. And so Eschaton, a couple of years ago, decided we wanted to really changed that narrative. And how we were gonna do that is develop a special message. At that time, it was called a brand message. And so what we did is we took quite a period of time, came together with a lot of different departments um, and, and discussed what is it that makes Eschaton different? And so we had to think about one of the, not one, but the most important asset within our organization is our, is our dear residents. And that's the message that we wanted to uplift is that age is beautiful. 
no matter what one's age is, what, no matter what one's abilities are, we can celebrate the, the life of years that have been lived, lived well. We see wisdom, we see graciousness. And like was mentioned today, this uh, ability to be steady and grounded. It's been interesting during COVID. Um, oftentimes, you know, people are expressing their concern for the vulnerable seniors. And indeed they are, uh, as they have, um, you know, a greater potential to contract the disease. That's, that's for sure. But something that's been very interesting is that we found many of our residents are showing their resilience in wonderful ways so that it's them who are encouraging our staff saying, we're gonna get through this. Don't worry, we're gonna get through this. You know, we've been through the depression. We could get through this, right? We've been through World War II. We can get through this. And so that's been another beautiful piece that um, no matter what one's age is, they're able to bring their special gifts and perspective and edify and encourage one another during this time when things have been so different than what we're used to. So we, we decided we wanted to create this brand message that challenges society that, you know, instead of seeing the negative pieces of aging, we want to celebrate the positive aspects of aging. So I have to tell you a little bit about me personally and how I had to reconcile this in my own heart. My parents actually lived at Eschaton. They came to Eschaton and Carmichael Village about uh, seven and a half years ago. And this was before I was there. And I still remember very vividly the conversation I had with my mother. She called me on the phone when they made that decision to sell the home that we were raised in, in, in the Carmichael area, in the Del Deo area, not too far from you. And um, I, I started to cry. And my mother in her gracious wisdom said, Darlene, we are still the same. Yes, our needs have changed, but we're still the same. And we want you to still have a relationship with us. And, and it was so wise for my mom to really bring me to that realization that though their needs have changed, it's them who we have a relationship with. So I was able to be supportive of that change, but it wasn't instantaneous. I remember thinking with the, the cell of the home that we grew up in and how it had been such an anchor for, for me during my life growing up, as well as adult years of challenges and difficulties, that house seemed to represent the anchor. And then I realized that's a material possession and that should not be my anchor. And I thought about the dining room table that though it was a material possession, that probably was the one piece I was going to miss the most. Again, it wasn't because of the material that it was made of but because of what it represented. And that was the hospitality that we enjoyed um, throughout the years there of gathering together with special friends and family and just enjoying the warmth of fellowship. That was probably the hardest thing for me to let go. But again, I had to remember, we would still be present with my parents. And in fact, we spent Christmases there in their little apartment at Eschaton on the floor eating pizza at Christmas. And it did not matter. <laughs> it was the fact that we were together. And that, those uh, illustrations really have taught me so much. I wanna share with you a little bit more about my dad. My dad, uh, when they began to, the move to Eschaton was just experiencing a little bit of cognitive change. So we recognized that things were changing. My dad is a retired administrative law judge. And so as you can imagine, as my dad's memory began to be compromised, we were all a little surprised because my dad was the closest person I had ever met to a genius. Another thing about my dad growing up is that he was, as a judge, a stalwart for the truth. He upheld the truth, he discerned the truth, and the truth was ultimately absolute and important. And so my sister and I decided at a very young age, it was absolutely futile for us to try to lie to my dad. And, um, and that was good because lying is wrong anyway, but dad could tell. So as he began to experience more and more changes and he had more and more needs, that message of age is beautiful became more and more challenging for me as I watched my mother care for my dad in extremely difficult, challenging ways. 
And yet I then had to realize this is absolutely beautiful. Against the backdrop of my commit of her commitment to my father, I saw age is beautiful. Another thing I saw in, in the midst of my father's dementia was that though he didn't know what day it was, he didn't know what season it was, what year it was, he never forgot two things. And those two things were his faith and that he loved us. He loved his family. And I thought that is beautiful. And so without inconsistencies or personal hypocrisy, I was able to embrace age is beautiful, even in the midst of ch challenges such as those. My dad, again, the judge, thought he was a sports announcer for the San Francisco Giants. And, and that was quite, quite interesting. And I realized that's so beautiful. He said, that's a dream job. <laughs> that, that's beautiful, dad. And then even, even moreover, he thought I was his agent. And I thought that was extremely beautiful that I would be my dad's agent as he was always, he was always really uh, um, my, the advocate on my behalf. So um, Eschaton taught me so much and this brand taught me so much about how when we're able to see the most precious values lived out regardless of one's age or ability, we see beauty. And that one is able to contribute and have a meaningful, purposeful life still filled with growth, opportunity, security, autonomy, identity, connection, all those things, as well as ultimately joy, envelop their, their lives and make it absolutely beautiful. And we're privileged to be able to share in that beauty. And so that's why it was, uh, as that brand message was being developed, I came across a quote and it's still in the original sticky form I wrote in pencil is by Marcel Proust. And it says, the joy of discovery does not come in finding new landscapes, but in seeing with new eyes. And so I pray, oh Lord, please help me to see those eyes. Help me to see the beauty of your creation lived out in people and relationships. Help us to embrace the beauty of forgiveness, the beauty of redemption, the beauty of new beginnings. Lord, we want to be those who stand for everybody without any um, divisions, but always inclusivity. And so that's a little bit about Eschaton and Age is Beautiful. We want to uphold that and we want it to be not only something that we challenge society, but we really want to live it out. And so I have the privilege within our community outreach department to make sure that we're delivering free resources to the community to enhance their quality of life. And one particular program is our telephone reassurance program that makes calls, friendly phone calls to elders 365 days a year. Um, through COVID, we have over 120 volunteers now from all over the United States, um, and we call over uh, 500 participants. And so if you know of anybody who might need a friendly phone call, it's a wonderful service. I would truly recommend that. And along with that, if there are any resources that I could perhaps provide, I'm happy to do that. And I'm happy to integrate you more into the lives of, of um the Eschaton family of services. And I'm so thankful, Rabbi Nancy, that you are doing candlelight services there and that you are part of the spiritual life there. I thank you so much for that. And thank you so much for this conversation. I'm so grateful. <laughs> um, oh my gosh, I'm so happy to meet you. <laughs> and thank you so very much. Um, I'm very interested in hearing more about the chaplaincy program that you have there. Oh, I'd be thrilled. I'd be thrilled to tell you more. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, I, Jeannie, you were absolutely right when you lifted up the Sophia Loren quote for, for Darlene, for sure. And um, I just can't stop smiling. Um, <laughs> and uh, thank you. Thank oh, you. No. Thank you. It's fun. All right. So for any of us who may have some questions um, about what Darlene's work is, I know that we'll have an opportunity 
to either contact me or Jeannie Appel and we'll see what other ways of connection we can do. Um, there, I just wanted, Esther Verano, are you there? Esther, maybe? I'm here. Okay. Hi, Hi, my friend. Can you just remind, just what, how Neshama, our religious school, is connecting in this way um, that blends into the message that Darlene said? Yeah, what an inspiring uh, talk. Thank you, Darlene. We're so uh, uh, wanting our kids to be involved with their elders in the community. And so part of uh, one of our projects as Jeannie has uh, conveyed uh, to you, I know in, in all the exchanges you've had is that our kids, both the little ones all the way up to the teens will be assembling care packages and collecting donations and then we'll deliver them to our dear friends in Eschaton. So uh, we're really looking forward to February. It'll be a fun month, but a month where, you know, young and old, um, you know, join hands in some sort of way. So well, thank you for the opportunity. Oh, thank you so much. It means so much to us. Thank you. That will inspire so much happiness throughout the community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi. My pleasure. Rick, do you want to give us the words of Yihi Yularetzan? Friends, we turn in our thoughts to offer prayers for anyone who is in need of healing. And if there later, please contact me if there's anyone on this list that I can personally reach out to who I might not know who's on the list or anyone who you will be adding. I would, I so want to reach out to them. From our Misha Berach list of Praise. Uh, we send love to Marsha Cass and Millie Birch and Kara Keeley Frampton, Tony Maynard, Sylvia Wexler, Yael Amir and Marty Zimmerman, Wendy Phoenix and Joe and Ethan Zidel, Mike White and Tanja White, Stanley Carter, Wendy Phoenix, David Ash. Stanley Carter, Ellen King, Martin Gershwitz, Morgan Phoenix, Robin Knuckles, Sky Snyder, Sue Ehrlich, Trevor Snyder, Carol Heyman, David Hale, Yossi Ben Sa'ala, Raul Saavedra, Joe Reber, Bruce Pat, Sandy Lewin. Helga's mother who has COVID. I'm so sorry to hear that.
We take a deep breath and we move from prayers of the heart to sharing information in our community. I would like to welcome Lynn Snyder, who will share tonight's announcement. Lynn? Hi, welcome, members and guests. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, my name is Lynn Snyder, and I am the Vice President of Operations on the board. Um, we want to thank Matt Kurtz and Sharon Gardner for co-chairing our very successful lot to sell. We also want to thank the sponsors, volunteers, and all our supporters. Tomorrow's Musar study has been canceled. It has. Wait, 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 no it hasn't. No it hasn't. Oh, sorry. It's not canceled. It's at 9 a.m. Michelle that's Michelle. Tuesday is our monthly board meeting at 7 p.m. Everyone is welcome to attend. The link was in today's email and there will be a reminder Tuesday morning. Next week's Shabbat service and Torah study will be facilitated by our lay leaders. Also, a reminder that Rabbi Pastro is starting a new six-week session of his Life of Meaning, class January 5th. The class meets Tuesdays at noon. The registration link is at the bottom of the homepage, and you will also <coughs> um, be in a reminder email. Adult Hebrew is an ongoing class happening Thursday evenings at 7 p.m. Join any time by registering on the homepage. Thank you. And then, oh, and then, go ahead, Rick. Okay. The Sisterhood of Congregation Beth Shalom continues to lead a matching contribution campaign for our general fund. For every dollar that's donated between now and December 31st, 
2020, the sisterhood is going to match dollar for dollar up to $4,800. So if you donate $52, the sisterhood will match it and donate $52 for a total of $104. This will be really amazing and fun. Mark match on your check memo or a credit card transaction and please join us in this campaign and remember, no gift is too small and every gift makes a difference. Thank you. Thanks, Rick. So we move into our last two prayers. And Rick, I think you need to mute. So we rise for Alani. Alleni lishabach la don ha kol la tikri la liotze brishi. Gelo asanu hagel, gelo asanu kigli yeharat sot, gelo samanu kmishpachot adama, gelo sam chelkenu kahem, legor alenu kechol hamonam, vanachnu korim. Umishtachavim umodim, Lifne melech mache hamlachim, Hakadosh barechu. Shehuno teshamayim vel yoser aretz, Umoshev yekara bashamayim imaal, Ushchina tuzo, Ushchina tuzo, the God he meromim, who Eloheinu enod, am at makinu efesulato, pagatu the Torah to v'adat hayom vehashivota elevavecha ki Adonai who are Elohim. Bashamayim mi ma'al ve'al ha'aretz ve'al ha'aretz mi hitachat e'enot. V'nemar v'haya Adonai l'melech al kol ha'aretz b'yom ha'hu b'yom ha'hu Ye Adonai Echad Ushmo 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 Echad Friends, we remember with much love those who have died within the 11 months and they are on our Kaddish list as well as those who, who are on our yard site list who died at this time in years past. We remember Ivan Krakowski, Michael Salman, Frank Ketchel, Patrick Ashley, Rabbi Jonathan Sachs, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Alfredo Laniado, Beatriz Massad, Dean Myrtle, Alberto Arab Cohen, Kathy Klein, Samuel Alberto Aposoa, Herb Glassman, Lori Malkin Zidel, Bella Berkovich, Brian Ginsburg, Rebecca Yabif Segura de Aposoa, Betty Perry, Gerard Rosenberg, Stephen Henry McCoy, Raquel Bienvenida Yabif Segura, Phil Rosenberg, Warren Weinstock, Samuel Aposoa Segura, Robert Alexander Ginsburg. And we remember with much love, Karen Cargill, David de Beauvoise, George Elkins, William Garcia, Sylvia Grossman, Lillian Hirsch, Frederick Johnson, Laverne Kane, Rebecca Owen, Joe Levy, Alvin Mal Malkin, Harry Matskun, Nellie Minkin, Owen Rebecca, Simon Solars, 
Renee Solars Fryden, Arlen Weiss, Richard Weisman, Eleanor Weintraub. Are there any other dear friends or members of your family or community? Please let me know so that I can say their names out loud. Harold Bomander. Jerry Davis. David Stern. And all those who have lost their lives to this terrible disease of COVID. For all who do not have anyone to say Kaddish for them. Yitkadal v'yitkadash shemei rabba. Yama divrach yotev yamlich machute. V'chayechon v'yomechon v'chayei d'cho b'y Yisrael. V'agalav zaman kari v'imru amein. Yehi shemei rabba mevorach le'olam u'amei amaya. Yitbarach v'yishtabach v'yitpa'ar v'yitroman v'yitnase. V'yitadar v'yitale v'yitalal shemei d'kudusha b'richu. La'ela yinko b'rachata v'shirata. Tushpachata v'nechamata d'amiran v'yama v'imru amein. Yehi shlama rabba min shemayim. V'chayim alenu v'yakol Yisrael v'imru amein. Ose shalom b'mramav. Hu ya'ase shalom. Alenu v'yakol Yisrael. V'yakol yoshvei tevel. V'imru amein. I think we're going to actually go straight into um, the Kiddush because there's our wonderful service has gone a little longer, but before Kiddush, and I believe that Joel Birch will be leading it. I just wanna do a, a shout out. Um, and Joel and Jessica, are you right there? We're here. Okay, you know, somebody's daughter, and I believe it is yours, uh, was just given, uh, it's, it's it, which daughter received this opportunity with change makers? Amalia. So Amalia Braverman Birch is a part of the Jewish change makers fellowship. It's a three week online leadership development opportunity for Jewish college students and recent graduates ages 20 to 25. So fellows will expand their career, their network, and most importantly, their ability to affect positive change in our community and the world. So a big shout out to you guys, Mazel Tov for that. Thank We're you. very proud of her. All right, so um, are you ready, Joel? I am ready. Okay, are you tuned up? Let's stand if we're able and we'll join Joel in Kiddush. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Borei Pari Agathem Amen. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kivshanu B'mitzvah Tav Meratzavanu V'Shabbat Kadshah V'Yahav Uvratzon Hinkhilanu Sikaron L'maseh V'Reshit Ki Hu Yom Tachila L'Mikro Ekodesh Seker L'Tziyad Mitzrayim Ki Vanu V'Acharta V'Yotanu Kidashta V'Kol Hamim V'Shabbat Kadshah V'Yahav Uvratzon in Kaltanu, Baruch Atarnai, Mekadesh HaShabbat. L'chaim. L'chaim, and thank you so much. Thank you, Joel, and so nice to hear your voice and just to see you both. Um, it's time to break bread together. And I want to, um, maybe because we know this blessing, um, perhaps we could just go on gallery, Rick. Oh, there it is. Look at those challahs, so beautiful. But let's go on gallery so we can see one another, okay? All right, a big shout out to you, Rick, for the beautiful job you did. And uh, 
Darlene, thank you so much. And all of you who participated, Jeannie, thank you for bringing her to us and Susan for your leadership in social justice. And for all of you who said yes when I asked you to read something, <laughs> thank you. All right, Baruch Atad and I, Eloheinu melech alam, hamotzi lachem min haaretz, amen. B'teavon, Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Good to see everybody. Good to see you. Shalom. 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 Shabbat Shalom. Thank you, Darlene. Yeah, special yes, thank you to thank Darlene you. for sharing that. That was really special. It was so inspiring. Thank you, Jeannie, for bringing that. Bringing mm -hmm. thank you. My pleasure, my honor. Thank you, Darlene. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> we Bye. will meet you again, Darlene. Good night. Good night, everybody. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. And Carol and Roberta and Susan and Charlie and Holly and Bob and Heidi. Tora <laughs> study tomorrow. It's going to be good. It's going to rock. Okay. Thank right. you, Sharon okay. and Nick. Kelly, it's so nice to see you. Yeah. Nice. I think I'm too young to go to Tora study. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's too young for study. <laughs> I don't think you have to be 120, Bob. No, no. Right. Yeah, I, I, I can't do that. <laughs> he doesn't have enough wisdom yet. That's right. Oh, I still have my wisdom teeth. That's good. <laughs> keep them, keep them. That's a good sign. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Mario, nice to have you here, even if we can't see you. Thank you.